Welcome back. Looks like I got myself another LTE. So, let's talk about these. So, this is the 5280 that I bought at Hamvention 2013 in Dayton, Ohio. And, um, that's actually when I met the Tech Knight in person. Uh, I was working for, um, a friend of mine who was an electrical engineer, and uh, he had a booth uh, selling the Anatech Blue ESR meters and this shirt. We were selling these t-shirts. Anywho, ironically, that's what I'm wearing right now. <laughs> so, when I was there, I, uh, yeah, I picked this up at the flea market uh, in between, you know, I was taking little short breaks here and there, and we would switch off running the booth, and... Uh, of all the things that were at that flea market, there were some pretty cool things. I, I bought an LTE. <laughs> Brought it back to the hotel room. It fired right up. I'm like, sweet. So why the LTE? Because they are one of my favorite laptops from, you know, the history of laptops. The LTE 5000 was Compaq's um, mainstream offering to corporations and to professionals. It was a no-nonsense but fully loaded laptop. Very expensive. I think they cost anywhere from three to six grand based on configuration. Um, they had a lot of expandability options. You could add more RAM by removing a cover back here. Let's see if I can show that. That little cover right there, it's got a little handle that pulls out and you just remove two screws and boom, you've got memory expandability. It used proprietary DIMMs um, but, you know, it could be done. It also had three bays in the front that could be cleared out in a GIF. You got your battery, your optical drive, we'll get into that in a minute, and your hard drive is right here. We'll just, uh, you just open up this door, flip a switch underneath, and you can remove your hard drive just like that. Um, prior designs, especially those from Compaq, um, you had to disassemble the machine to a certain degree to do any of these things. So it was a very versatile machine designed for the business traveler. Um, you could run it with two batteries by removing your multi-bay drive, which could be a floppy... Ooh, I almost lost that one. Which could be a floppy drive. There you go. And then you pop in another battery. And uh, the battery face expands like that, and boom, you've got two batteries, which would probably give you somewhere around four hours of runtime with two brand new batteries. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But that would be enough for most regional flights. And in fact, you could almost fly halfway across the country in one, uh, you know, just by swapping out your battery, and there you go. Um, so it was a mark, it was a mark, it was a kind of a sign of things to come in the laptop market, at least for the, for the next uh, almost 10 years, um, as laptop manufacturers adopted that modular design. It also had a built-in multimedia um, audio interface, and it had two PCMCIA slots hidden behind a nice, well-crafted door. Um, it was a fully dockable machine. In fact, Compaq released a, uh, a full-featured docking station that also offered the ability to use it as a desktop PC. It had, um, I believe it had ISA slots, maybe a PCI slot or two. It had a five and a quarter inch bay in the front. Uh, very nice dock. You could put a monitor on top and there you have a basically a complete desktop, much like the PowerBook Duo was intended to be used as. It also featured a rear-mounted uh, infrared port. And behind this door, you've got all of your I.O. ports. It's a very nice laptop. A very well-designed laptop. They were fairly durable. Um, I believe that these were, in fact, Compaq's first Pentium-class laptops. Um, they would have been released sometime in, I, I want to say, 96, possibly as late as early as 95, um, in one form or another. Um, but the LTE 5000 series also is currently in use by McLaren <laughs> for programming the ECUs of the F1. 
Uh, McLaren recently uh, was mentioned in an article on Jalopnik um, saying that they are actually actively scouring eBay for parts to keep their LTE 5280. And this is the exact model that they use, the 5280, um, in order to make use of a special serial interface that they use with their F1 uh, supercars. So that's a little bit of a fun fact with these. These are recently have gained notoriety for that. Um, but don't think for a second that McLaren wants to buy my LTE for some ungodly sum of money. As a matter of fact, that is highly unlikely. Um, if anything, if I were McLaren, I'd be putting my money into uh, investing in a way out. Uh, possibly <laughs> that would be their smartest move. Anyway... What is the purpose of this video? Well, this is really for those of you who are fans of the LTE 5000 series. And, um, and there are some of you out there. So yeah, they're a very durable laptop. They're a very well-featured laptop. And they have one of the best sounding speaker setups I have ever heard in any laptop. They have speakers mounted up in the lid here. Boom, boom. And... Uh, other designs from companies like IBM even place the speakers under your wrists so that when you're typing you are blocking the sound. Compaq had a better idea. It made for a thicker display uh, panel assembly but it really wasn't that much of a trade-off. Laptops were thick anyway and these are no exception. These are almost two inches thick um, but that was par for the course in 1996-97 when these were um, well into production. They also took over, or they copied IBM's uh, AccuPoint or, or TrackPoint um, eraser head mouse. Now, please forgive me, every manufacturer had their own term for these. I believe IBM's was TrackPoint, but I've been corrected many times by the same damn people. I'm looking at UV Westlife. Um, these are I believe Compaq had a different name, and I think it was AccuPoint, but don't quote me on that. They also featured a, uh, a very popular feature at the time. And again, I think they copied, um, I think it was NEC that started this trend. But they used an LCD display uh, to show, or to, to display system status. Um, for example, power charge level, power status um, power saving status, uh, drive access, etc, etc. It was a, it was a cool, th cool idea at the time, but often these displays failed. In fact, every Compaq LT that I've ever come across has had at least one or two icons that were out. This display has already been replaced. Um, it has 50% more functionality than the original one, but even it is not fully functional. Um, the plastic that Compaq made these laptops out of is fairly durable. Um, I don't see a lot of these with any major uh, structural defects, cracks, chips, etc. Now, comparing that to a Toshiba satellite from the time, same time period, the satellites generally have extensive damage to the chassis, uh, be it missing parts, complete chunks missing, cracks, you name it, I've seen it. Um, and I haven't seen one that didn't suffer from stress cracks or other failures of the chassis. In fact, I've got one upstairs that I actually paid money for. I can't believe it, but it was an impulse purchase. And after I got it home, I started taking it apart, and I'm like, oh my god, this thing is a complete piece of junk. Nevertheless, the Compaq has a fairly flexible... That was the issue. See, the, the Toshiba plastics were brittle. Whereas Compaq's plastics, on, at least on this generation of the LTE line, um, the 46s and 3D6s that preceded it were far worse. But these, this plastic is fairly flexible. It's harder to break. It doesn't crack easily, and it holds up over time. One of the areas where these didn't really hold up so well were the port doors. Um, as you can see, I've done some repair work on this one, where the uh, here, the little springy latch right there, those tended to crack. And this one is cracked, but it hasn't broken off yet. 
these broke off. So I took some silicone. I know I used the wrong. I used black because it's what I had on hand at the time um, to kind of create a new spring. And you can see it works pretty well. If I put a little bit of pressure in there, there's some give. It does what it's supposed to do. So that's how I fixed them. Anyway, what I really want to show you guys is the fact that I finally got the factory optical drive for the 5280. It came with this 5400 that I bought from a, a fellow YouTuber, NJ Road Fan. And uh, the whole reason I bought this laptop was for this. This is all I wanted. It's it. It's all I wanted was the optical drive. And I paid dearly for it. I've been looking for an optical drive for quite some time. I want to say three years I've been looking for one of those drives. And when I finally found one, boom, I bought it. So, let's talk about this 5400. Now, this 5400 was a slightly better machine than the 5280. It's faster. It goes from a Pentium 120 to a Pentium 150. It also features a slightly larger display running at the same 1024 by 768 resolution. But you can see, I'll, I'll compare these side by side, the 5400 is significantly larger. As the price of an LCD display began to decline, and uh, more and more people were buying larger and larger displays, Compaq took advantage of that. So we've got a laptop from 96 and 97. And you can see, slightly larger. Um, consequently, the speakers got smaller, but you give a little bit to get a little bit. In every other aspect, these are identical machines. Almost every component is interchangeable, with the exception of the main board. And I believe the, um, the, uh, the, the back plane board as well. I'm not positive on that, but I should look into that a little more. But for the most part, they're the same machine. So parts are interchangeable. I bought this for the optical drive, but I also took the keyboard, the rear door, and a few other bits and pieces to improve the condition of my 5280. There's not much else here that I need. The, I know you're thinking, well, why don't you take the bigger screen and maybe the, you know, I'm considering it. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do here. I might end up restoring that 5400 with parts from the 5280. I haven't quite figured out where I'm going to be. What I've got to do is completely disassemble both machines and inspect all the parts for wear and tear, and then take the best of everything and build one good machine. That's what I need to do. But I've got to keep the main board and the displays together. So, because I don't believe the board on this one will drive that display. I haven't tried it, but I'm not willing to, tr to, to risk blowing something up in the process. But I have to fix these doors. I've got to get some clear silicone and uh, make new springs. That's my next step there. And then I'm going to put those doors on whichever machine becomes the finished product. I hope that wasn't too wordy, but hey, you're watching this video for free, so live it up. Um, let's go ahead and fire up the 5280. And thanks to this deal, I got uh, two... 232 megabyte RAM expansion cards, which means that I now have 81 megabytes of RAM. There is some onboard memory here. Come on. So I'm trying to do this with one hand. It's not easy. So let's fire this one up. You see that display it looks pretty good. That's I paid twenty dollars for that display on eBay a little while ago. So, I'm also planning on rebuilding the uh, battery pack, which is why I've got this hollowed out shell here. And I've got the rest of it upstairs, but I'm going to build a new battery pack. Oop, I didn't mean to go to F10 setup, I'm sorry. F1, there we go. So, yeah, oop, no, it went in anyway. Here, exit. Yeah, it's the Pentium 120 and 82 megabytes of RAM. So, save and exit. Yes. Oh, that reminds me. I've got a nice little CMOS battery here. This battery is dead. 
I've got to bring this over to Batteries Plus and see if they'll sell me a, um, a battery cell. The Batteries Plus in my area will rebuild most battery packs, but they do charge for it, and it's not cheap. So I'm hoping they can just get me a cell and I'll just build, build the battery myself. This is just plain old shrink tubing and, you know, nothing really serious here. Inside this uh, shrink tube uh, assembly, you've got a, um, I believe it's a thermal cutoff or perhaps a diode or something in there, but nothing really fancy. These rechargeable uh, memory batteries are, um, you can still buy them, but they're old stock. So you don't really want to buy those. But as you can see, the 5280 runs fantastic. Um, I also got a uh, 2.1 gigabyte hard drive. That was factory equipment in the 5400, but the drive is dying. It does still spin up and it will boot the machine, but it makes some pretty horrible noises. Um, almost like a, a seek failure type noise. It just randomly starts uh, cycling or cyclic reading. It, it's a, well, when you hear it, you'll know what I mean. Um, but the drive is failing. I can't use it. And I've been going through my stack of drives and I found a, I think it's a six gigabyte drive and I'm going to boot it off a floppy and see if I can't format that drive and uh, make this one a running machine too. That'll be my next step. We'll see how it goes. But that's pretty much all I have for now. In a later video we'll talk about the battery. I know I started a video project on that. I did the disassembly and I priced out the cells. Uh, but once I have the cells ordered I'll start building that battery pack and you'll get to see how that's done. And I actually have a spare battery shell if I need it. Because um, I'm only really hoping to have one good machine in the end. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to sell any of the leftover parts or even a complete working unit. Um, so please don't ask. If, I, if you have my eBay username, it's BB Computer Museum. Keep an eye on that. You might see some compact parts or complete machine uh, pop up on there at some point in the future. Just take a look at BB Computer Museum. That's my eBay seller ID. And, uh, and, and uh, monitor that as I start selling off other things. I might have some leftover parts that I don't need. As you can see, my house is pretty small. I don't have a lot of storage here, so I can't keep everything. So, um, Also, my next video, I'm hoping, will be the uh, PowerBook 165 that I bought from the same, uh, same guy, NJ Roadfan. And a uh, quick sneak peek on that, the PowerBook 165 is going to be needing a display recap job. I'll show you how to do that. I'll do it for the first time myself and we'll go through and see how it works out. Uh, but the display is fading out on it and it's a common issue where the caps begin to fail on the display panel. And we're going to do that. I've got to replace the clock battery but the rest of it is in pretty damn good condition. I even have a, um, a slightly better hard drive I might pop in there and uh, and use that too. The hard drive in the uh, in the 165 it doesn't sound healthy to me. Um, but anyway, so stay tuned for all that. I haven't forgotten about you computer collectors. I've just been doing a lot of other things, mostly dealing with my pets. They just needed a, a new heater and a few other things. So anyway, until then, guys, keep on watching.